I didn't think players really feared LeBron like they did Jordan. I've never really heard any players say they fear LeBron. It's not that you shouldn't fear LeBron. I just think at the end of the day, LeBron has been through so much that he wanted to be like. He's someone that's been tearing up the podcast circuit, but his credentials are much bigger than that. A two-time NBA champion, a FIBA champion, an NCAA champion with a game-winning shot that people still talk about every freaking March. He made LeBron yell, he made Dwayne laugh, and the city of Miami will never forget the name Fuck Luigi, because we have Mario Chalmers in the house. <laughs> and he's wearing green, too, in honor of Luigi. Do you know, hold on, do you know Mario's full name? Yeah, Mario. Eugene Chalmers. No. <laughs> tell, tell him the full name. Mario Bartholomew Chalmers. Nah, Al Mario Bernard Chalmers. Al, 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 Mario? Al Mario. What are you, Dominican? I think my dad might be. He's, oh, he's, okay. he's mixed with a bunch of stuff. So. And he's from thing. Alaska. You from Alaska? Yeah. Really from Charlotte. Oh. My, dad, my dad was in oh. the Air Force. They got black people in Alaska? Yeah, a lot of black people. Because my dad's in the Air Force. So okay. Alaska okay. got okay. a lot of, okay. Okay. Lot of okay. military. So you're not from Alaska? I claim Alaska. I was raised in Alaska, so That's yeah. crazy. I never military kids. I never knew they had black people in Alaska. Carlos Boozer and Mario Chalmers are the only two black people from nah, Alaska. Alaska. Tra Trajan Langdon. Trajan Langdon. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. All right, is it true it only stays like it, six months is dark yeah. and six that's true? That's that's uh that's like up north, like Nome and stuff like that. Yeah. It wasn't in Anchorage, but yeah. They go through that. Man. Could you imagine that in New York, daytime all the time for six months? When would we get to do our diabolical shit? I know, that's crazy. We need the sun to go down for us to live. We do, no, for you to live. I don't. That's true. All right, you just asked him, you said, do you miss playing? You said all the time. I do miss playing. I feel like the game is just different now than, you know, when I was playing, when I was in there. So it's a little bit easier. It looks a little bit easier now. Oh, so you, the style of the game, the open, the passing, the shooting, yeah, you be. Shoot a bunch of threes. That's, that's, that's what I got to do anyway. I stay in the corner and shoot threes, so. You can make yes. a lot of money shooting threes <laughs> right now. Now it'd be a little bit easier. Be honest. The money that these guards are making, does it upset you? Because the money that some of these bigs are making, Rudy Gobert, very <laughs> upsets me. It does upset me, but, um, you know, that's the way, the way to lead, you know. Money going you, up, so you got to pay somebody. Because they say your boy Luca going to be making about $80 million. Hey, Luca deserves it, though. Luca's been, that boy's special. So Shaq leaves Miami in 2008. You get to Miami the very next year. Were you hearing Shaq stories about what you missed out on? I heard a bunch of Shaq stories. I will tell me what yeah, you I heard. Hear, I want to hear a story that you I heard. heard uh, the d Wright story, chasing d Wright butt neck in the locker room. Whoa, 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 whoa. I want to hear this. So tell them the story again. Uh, the, you chasing D right in the locker room, the real right, butt naked in the locker room, coming out the shower. I heard about that story. He was talking. Was <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> Set it up. He, it's okay. So you got to understand when, when I'm on a team, I'm the president. I am the emperor. So when you're a rookie, do what the f I say, man. <laughs> oh, I got to show you how to get down. Like th th this around the time you really could put hands on people. But from yeah. 1992 to 2007, I touched the up in the locker room. That was me. So I told him to do something. He didn't do it. And like, he's he's also similar to me because he's a jokester. He thought I was playing. So I said, yo, man, playing. And I chased him around the locker room. And <laughs> Who was, was naked? You or him? I was both. I was butt naked. <laughs> he was just getting out the shower. But I wanted to, bro, you don't talk to like you. What, you, what? You, bro? Okay, so. Knock his okay. head off. So I, I get ready to grab him. You do was like, Shaq, Shaq, I ain't going to let y'all fight naked. And I ain't going to be trying to break two naked. Up, y'all said, I was, and I was like, oh, I am naked. I, 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 I wanted to kill his ass. Right, so that was one. You said you had another one? Hold on, uh, hold on. Hold on. Oh. And it was cold that day, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was definitely that story. Um, Give me another one. <laughs> uh, training camp. 
You told Pat you wasn't doing training camp one year, or you said you wasn't going to participate. I heard that story. He had to be the only one that told them that. Yeah, never saw I mean, else. I heard a bunch of stories between him and Jason Williams. I know they put Pat through a lot, so that's all the stories I got. Did they still have the body fat and all that stuff? Still had the body fat. And for guards, it was what? For guards, you had to be under under seven. Did they tell you? Did, did they tell you my secret? Yeah, they said you never made it. <laughs> no, I never made. Well, I, I, I used they to. They said make the first it. year, the first you came. So this, this is what I used to do, Shane. So like, let's just say, the body fat guy was coming in. I get in a right. sauna, and I put baby oil on. <laughs> so so trying to grab that. <laughs> 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 That's funny. I never yeah. ever thought about that. But yeah, Bill Frey used to come around with the little pinchers. Man. So I have a question. You you won on every level. Uh, do you feel people give you the respect that you deserve? Because no. I, I, I kind of know how I feel. You see lesser people get more props than you get. So yeah. how do you um, feel about that? I mean, it is what it is. I've never been the guy that's, you know, relishing my accolades. I always talk about it. So, you know, I like to be the, the small guy, the guy in the background. I get to move easier that way. So um, I've always liked it. I know, I know what I can do on the court. I know what... You know, I can hold my own against anybody, so I'm not worried worried about that. And the proof is in the pudding, you know. It takes a lot to be able to say you want on every level. This episode of The Big Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Ever wish you had more time? What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? If you're unsure about how you would use extra time, therapy can help. Therapy is not just for those who are dealing with trauma. It can help you with fine matters to you and you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Learn how to make time for what makes you happy. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Shaq today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Shaq. You asked if he deserved uh, more credit, and I think it goes into a segment that the general has with us on the big podcast that we normally do, what was your big break? But this time it's going to be give him a break. And so to what you asked before, who do we think deserves a big break? Who is somebody that you want to take that leap or make that journey that maybe isn't getting enough credit right now, whether it's negativity they're facing or, you know, transitioning out of? Um, the only person I could probably say is John Morant. Um, just with all that stuff going on, I want to see him definitely, you know, be on the flip side of it and come out on top again. That's one of my favorite players to watch, so... It does feel like an avalanche. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's that's what he's known for, and it's like, have you seen this man play? Right, exactly. That's a really good one. Mine would be Russ. Westbrook. Yeah, hell of a guy, great player. Unfortunately, we live in a world where you can be great individually, but for some people, a large amount of people, if you don't have that championship, they question your greatness. I would like him to be a bus driver mm. in a, a championship. I'm going to go with uh, Clay Thompson right now. I just. Hey, there's nothing wrong with Clay. No, no. I just, just getting back from injuries. Just, okay, let me hear the <laughs> other side of it. It's, it's just. We all know that athletes, as they get older, their production declines. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we're talking about his all the time. But it happens. He needs to, he father needs time, to realize. Father time he needs to realize that Father Time is the only one to beat him. Give me a player that, that busts Clay when Clay was Clay, like me. But I'm averaging 30 to 9 because I got old. That, and all that, Gobert ain't do The white ain't, ain't nobody do with me. Right. Went down because I'm 39, 40. And you got to think about his injuries. Older. Like, he had yeah. two of the, the worst injuries you could ever have as an athlete. Yeah. Torn Achilles, so which Clay, I went Clay, through. And, uh, Clay needs to just Jordan stop ACL. worrying about what people say and just play. Because when it's all said and done, he's, 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 he's a Hall of Famer. Mm. He got three or four rings, and it happens. Do you have a doctor? However, no. Oh, however, if he want to get another contract, he better turn it up. This episode of The Big Podcast is brought to you by The General. And you know Shaq loves The General. Before the league and all my championship rings, The General was there for me when I needed them the most. They gave me my big break on insurance. The General has been offering quality coverage for 60 years with low rates and flexible payment options to keep you covered. If you're ready for your big break, you know what to do. Visit thegeneral.com today to get a quote. That's thegeneral.com to get a quote today. And it wouldn't be the big podcast without the general. You always.
always talk about the importance of others. You were the most famous other <laughs> of that, those Heat teams. What do people not understand about that role? Um, it's no freedom, really. I think that was the biggest thing. Um, you know, when you play with dominant players, you want to win. And, you know, the easiest way to win is make sure the dominant player gets the ball. So, for me, um, it was a little tougher having three dominant players. But, you know, I figured it out. Um, they kind of made my job easier. Only two. Don't do that. CB was dominant. Come on, when we gave CB the ball. You know how I know that that's a question? He didn't say which one, and you said Chris Bosh. I already know. It's, yep. a, it's a big man thing. Like, I hear all, this, I hear all, so it's was, a big man but, thing. But don't throw my, my word around. Don't say He's dominant. Very, dominant's a very tough word. He was good. Okay, I'll give you that. Thank you. CB was very, very good. Thank you. He was exactly what we needed for our team. So, yeah. um, you know, being him the quiet guy that didn't really dominate the ball as much, you could actually pass him the ball in the areas that he gets you assists. And being with D-Wade and Brian, you just got to give him the ball wherever. As soon as they take off, just give him the ball, get out the way. So, they were known as the Heatles. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's my name. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> so you don't said for, that for us. I made it up. I know. That, see, don't. Boy. See, we had shirts and everything. One day, I don't. Bro, they had shirts. Did you have <laughs> shirts? No? Then they get it. But it was crazy because you ever watch they had never... Life? Yeah, you, you ever watch Life? Yes. <laughs> Say it one more time. You're gonna be going to New York. <laughs> That's how your ass gonna be going to New York. <laughs> um, but it, that team felt like a phenomenon. Can you give me a story of a, going to a city and seeing the Earthlings, the fans, react in a way where you went, "What am I a part of right now?" Um, I always take it back to that first game in Cleveland, um, Brown's first game, like. I've never seen fans that mad at a person, like from people trying to throw batteries on the court. We had somebody try to grab an officer's gun. Like it was just crazy what? stories like that. And it was just like, like you guys are really that mad that he left Cleveland to come to Miami. Like where's, I'm confused. Like how can you be that mad? And was it that atmosphere for the whole time, like the hours? The whole time, like from the time we ran to the arena to the time we left, it was just boos and yells, F LeBron, LeBron, you suck, all this. And it was just like, yeah, I was just praising this man last year. So you go to the locker room after the game, and what is that like? Like, because you're all realizing this could be an entire season of this. For me, I liked it. You know, I like playing the villain. So I, I'm licking my chops like, yeah. I'm with this. So if y'all, if you want to embrace the villain role, yeah. I'm gonna embrace it with you. Like, I'm, was it impacting LeBron though? I mean, this is his hometown. I don't know. It was hard to say because at, at one point he kind of embraced being a villain. Like, okay, y'all, y'all don't like me for making a decision that's gonna help my career, help me be a better basketball player. So, is it real personal or is it y'all just don't like what I did? So for him, it was kind of like he embraced it. It was like, yeah, I'll be the villain for right now because yeah. at the end of the day. That's all it is. So I've heard players say, including myself, I fear, I feared Mike. I've heard players in your generation say they feared Kobe. I've never really heard any players say they fear LeBron. And hey, you know, I got killed for that. Why is that? You're not gonna get killed here. I'm just, I'm, no, I'm just I'm, saying. When I first said that, people killed me for no, that. No, I'm, you said, I'm with you. you. I, said, I didn't think players really feared LeBron like they did Jordan. I never heard anybody say it. And it's not, it's not that you shouldn't fear LeBron. I just think. At the end of the day, Bron has been through so much that he wanted to be liked. So it was kind of like, he is a I'm, nice guy. Yeah, I'm gonna do Very things nice. now where yeah, like Bron. people like me, people respect. I mean, you're always gonna respect what he did, but you actually like Bron and want to be a fan of Bron now. So I think that's what that was. It's true. Like Kobe had the stage, MJ had the stage, and then towards the end, they kind of opened up to people. Right. Where LeBron was kind of open up to people the whole time. The whole time, and then they they made him. A when they turned their back on him when he left Cleveland. So that was the thing that kind of switched it. Plus, then it was like the all-black Miami jerseys, yeah. too. Yeah, like, so we embraced the role. That was the thing about it. We embraced it. What upset you about that? <laughs> I started that, too. Oh, the Mi oh you're right. Yeah, man. Oh, hey. Did you play no, in Miami? No disrespect to them. <laughs> I got Kenny on that one. <laughs> no disrespect to them. If this is a Star Wars movie, they're Star Wars 2 and 3. I'm you Star Wars 1. know that a lot of people believe <sighs> I'm Star Dark Wars Vader. 2 is the best Star Wars Yeah, I know they do. Yeah. Norris Cole, one of your old teammates, he said that Bam Adebayo is a top 25 player. You agree or disagree? Right now, top 25? Yeah. I agree. I definitely agree. Do you agree? I he think was he, an all-star, which means... I think he could do more, but I think... I have, to, I, have to, uh, I have to go through the list. I, I like Bam, so I'm not going to rush on this answer. Hell of a player. Yeah. 
The way I'll say this, there's but you're right. All-stars. He, 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 he could do it. more. And so technically, he could do more. He'd be top two. He can do more. I just think he could do more. Bam's a hell of a defender. I think that's that's his claim right now, and he's not showing exactly what he can do in the offense as much. I think he has more of an offensive package than what he's showing. Everybody, I just want to shout out one of the brands that we're working with that we love here at the Big Podcast. It is American Giant. They have hooked me up. They have given me all the T-shirts, all the gear, and I'm going to be honest, it's the only thing I'm wearing around my house right now. The quality of the feel, the look of it, I really like it. They even hooked me up with the French Terry Collection. I'm talking hoodies. I'm talking sweatpants. It is phenomenal. you got to check it out. And they've always hooked us up here at the big podcast. American Giant, huge fans. What I want you to do is you can find those closet staples right now. You get 20% off your first order when you use code BIG at checkout. This is at American-Giant.com. That is 20% off your first order at American-Giant.com. Promo code BIG. I'm telling you, when you get it, you will not regret it. I want to ask both of you this. Should MVP honors be based on what you do as an individual or what your team does? Because I have this argument with Charles every goddamn year. <laughs> should it be I'm a bad I could do this by myself or I'm a bad and my team is in second in the conference? Which one? I'll let you go first because I've had this conversation with him. Enough. Um, For me, that's a tough one. I think MVP is the most valuable player. So if you bring in – if you're bringing the most to the table, you, you're doing everything, then that should equal wins. So if you're doing that and you're not winning, are you really the most valuable player? Or are you just a very good player? Yeah, like I'll ask this question to you. Victor Wembanyama is leading the NBA in blocks. He's leading the NBA in stocks, steals, and blocks. Yeah, but There's a lot of people that last year, hold on, that gave – uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., Defensive Player of the Year, because of all those same categories. But the defense for the Spurs isn't that great. So how do we figure out, oh, is he the best defensive player in the league, or the team defense has to be that good? And we give it to Gobert because Minnesota's defense I don't give it so to him. I give it to Bam. I don't think mm. – I don't. me personally, I'm not a Gobert fan on the defensive end. I think, you think he's a little overrated on that side. Yeah, I definitely think so. Oh, Rudy? Yes. Thank you. Why do you think – Love you. Do you think this is a sentiment that the NBA thinks and that the fans and the analysts are on the wrong side of? Like, is this something that the players truly know? You know what I would like? I would like if, if this thing of ours was ran by us. I think that's like, it. Like, yeah. if, like, like, if you're going to do have an analytics guy, he played in the league for six, seven years. If you're going to have any, anything that's going on with the league, you need players looking at it. Like, I, I, I never thought he was a great defensive player either. See what it is is there's not a lot of centers that are that are making him play defense. Like he's not doing it against Joker because he has to be engaged. Oh. But when he's going against another guy, yeah. he's seven six. Of course, he's if you lay it up, he's gonna block it. But defense to me is guard that mm-hmm. shut him now. You want to impress me? Hold Joker under fifteen points. Mm-hmm. Now, now you're playing there. all that weak side blocking shot. Meet that's cool, around, but yeah. it ain't gonna that's work against guys do. like me and Joker and and you know and beat. What he's talking about with Bam, Bam, Bam plays people. He plays the, he plays the yeah. two, the three, the four, and the five. So I would give it to him too. But rookie of the year, who you got rookie of the year? Shet, Shet, Shet's team is winning. So that's that's the. But Victor Wimbanyama is doing it, things that haven't been done since you. That's what I'm saying. So ten and three. Who you give it to? I, I'm also a narrative guy, and I just feel like this has been the season of Victor. So I'm currently a Victor guy. I say take it back to 95, co-MVPs. Co-MVPs isn't crazy. I mean, co-Ricky uh, Years. Because my other issue is Chet's, he was drafted last year. He got hurt. Yeah, I don't player. also think that, the, you, I think, unfortunately, you're Everybody not says that, year. yeah. Everybody says that. But until you actually, the definition of a rookie is until you actually play your first NBA game, you're still technically a rookie. I have a question so. for both of you. Back to the Gobert thing. Who was somebody that, while you played, got a lot of love that people around the NBA were like, man, why is everybody, like, it doesn't match what we think of that person. There was a lot of people in my area. <laughs> you want to start it off? No. So I don't like to embarrass people. Okay. Without them knowing. You could always do the flip without side. Without them knowing I'm playing. somebody that never got love that the NBA during your era was like, you know, this dude should be getting more attention. Well, one of my teammates, D. Scott, should have got more love. It's one of the, one of the greatest big, shooters ever. He was... Stuff, eh? He could shoot that thing. Mm. He, he was always, yeah, he, but he was always bickering with, you know, people in the Orlando Magic. But he, I thought he definitely could have 
could have got more love. But there was a lot of players that, but I just always used that as, you know, motivation. You know, like I remember when I signed my my $40 million contract and I thought that was it. And then you got big dog asking for a hundred million. And I was like, thank you. Because I'm just getting a hundred million. I'm starting off at 150. Fine with me. So he got really close. So I tried to get the 150, didn't get it, and end up getting 120. And then Garnett got 122. I was like, okay, my next one, I'm gonna get a hundred again. So it's not. I, 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 would, I would. I would. I would. I would actually call people out mentally. Yeah, like you're telling the story, I, and me and him are looking at each other, being like, "Could you imagine 100?" Yeah, but that ain't nothing now. For sure, ain't. I about to say it's, it's something. I wish I. Nah, it it's ain't. 300 right now for yeah. eight so and eight. Like Shaq, at least average 20 and 10. You, you got people that's averaging. Eight point six rebounds, getting one hundred and twenty million. It's like, oh, man, like, yeah. like, oh man. Who, who did you love to guard in the NBA? Just give me, just give, just give me one guy. I love to guard Darren Williams. That was that was my matchup. Like I used to love guarding D-Will just because I knew he was going to bring the best out of me. That high crossover, the right to left. Like for me, once you dribble in front of me, that's that's easier for me to defend. And then instead of all the pick and rolls, like a Chris Paul, where you got to guard a hundred pick and rolls. Oh, I don't man. like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you guys see the clip? A guy named Alex Rucker was a scorekeeper for the Grizzlies. Yeah, he came out and that there's a lot of stats and stuff that were falsified. I don't believe that. Give him some more assists because it's John Stockton. I don't believe that. Did you ever look at the box score and go, my numbers aren't matching up to what I thought I did? Nah, I've never seen that on my box score. Yeah, I've never seen that on mine either. I've, did I've, you make a face, though? <laughs> no, if the so I had 20 rebounds and I only had eight. I had 20 rebounds. Oh, see. So, but there was never a... <laughs> you talking about? Whatever said on the paper, that's what I got. That's what it said. Oh, so you're, was there ever a time, though, where you thought, man, I got some extra rebounds there? No, I never. I never really cared. I only cared about just, just my stats had to be dominant. So, like, if it was like a high rebound game and a high point game, I was happy. But I don't... I don't believe that. I mean, did he probably do it once or twice? But if you can't confirm it, it's just words at this point. Mm. Like, it, like, like if he has a, one of these cameras and it showed him and they go, John passed it, but it was a turnover. But watch me do it. Now I believe it, but if he's just saying it, don't come out 15 years it. later and tell me what you did, because. All right, well, I'll tell you what. All those free throws they said I missed, I didn't miss none of them. <laughs> so now I'm n- number two in scoring. I, I don't want to hear that. I have seen you. I just want to ask this. I've seen you do a bunch of podcasts. Later. Oh, I got one more question. Okay. I don't look like Charles Barkley, but I, I say you give me six months. Be honest. You ain't going to ever hurt my feelings. We boys. Say what you want. Joke about me. You think I can play in the big three? Yeah. Easily. I got a perfect spot for you, too. Come over there with me, Mike Beasley. Ooh. Ooh, you ain't got to do nothing but stay in the paint. Ooh. Easy. Get you another championship. I couldn't stop that boy for nothing. Yeah, Beasley was a different breed. Oh, he was. Different Talk breed. Like, I've always, well, I didn't really guard him, but like just I had to go, like, I couldn't, the only left hander I could stay, well, not stay in front of, but compete with was David Robson because mentally I hated him. Not hate him as a person, but he was just my idol. And, yeah, he had and when my idol dug me out, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess him up. Lawrence Funderburg, remember him? I couldn't do with that. Good old Lawrence. Is he white? No, wow. light skinned kid from Indiana, left handed, herky jerky. Slow left Michael hand. Beasley. I couldn't, I'm like, this. Yeah, Beasley. They, they was different. Beasley was a whole different brand. So, you really think I could play? I really do. It'd be easy. I thought about it, but I would have to get, like, I, I just had hip surgery and I haven't, I ain't played since, like, I, I, I don't it's think I can get court. back in that mode. It's just half court and we switch everything. Oh, you do? Yeah. This, this wing. Barbecue chicken alert. Yeah. You know what? Come I on. Got to. I, think I, about it. It starts, it starts in June. It starts Father's Day weekend. You got some time to think about it. I mean, I got to start working on now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what had happened was. <laughs> the podcast was taking up too much of my time yeah, and I damn. couldn't train. Um, so Shaq is a doctor. Can we make Mario an honorary doctor? for the fan advice, just in case he has something yes. to say? Yes. Okay. We have a doctor. So what we do here on the Big Pod. And I'm a real doctor, by the way. I have a PhD. I know. Just, okay. Yeah, I know. Just, People just, just, send in questions, and then he is their doctor. Uh, and again, if you want to ask questions to Dr. O'Neill, you can send it via email to askdroneal at gmail.com or in the comments of the YouTube section. First Lady is their name on YouTube. At First Lady asks, 
None of my three children will answer my phone calls. It really hurts. What would you do? And this is for Honorary Dr. Mario Chalmers and, of course, Dr. O'Neill. You have children? Mm-hmm. Got four. Three kids. Three boys and a girl. Ages. Uh, oldest is 16, 13, 10, and 5. Well, you don't have this problem yet, or maybe you do, but welcome to my life. Really? Yeah. So you'll be like, why don't you call dad anymore? Yes, but then I have to, like when it comes to my kids, I try not to be hypocrites. I did the same thing to my parents. Right. I I left June 6, 1989, and we didn't even have cell phones then, but one day we had a dorm cell. I wasn't calling like that. And definitely when I turned pro, I definitely wasn't calling like that. I should have called more. You know, that's why we talked about, you know, the ifs that I deal with. Mm. What if I called my father more? Probably got more knowledge. What if I called my sister more? So instead of getting mad and going, why you don't call me? You just have to put it with the sign of the times. They know when they need me, they call me. I said, yeah. You know, we had a, you know, I had an incident, you know, the other day where, you know, my daughter needed something and then she called me and I was right there, but. Hey, they're, they're grown, and I just look at the fact that, I don't like to use this word, but I have I got seven children, I ain't had no problems whatsoever. Not one. Oldest is 27, and a really young one. I haven't had no, 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 no problems, so I just let them be. But they Did know. tell her, just call them? Like, is that the solution? Like, don't, like, don't take it personal. It's like, yeah. show kids. Like, they're always going to call you at some point. They're going to need you. But I know I know exactly what you're going through. But me personally, I don't take it personal. I just mm-hmm. I'm just glad I got a great kid. When I tell you no problems, zero. Zero no spankings, no nothing. I, I was just gonna ask, I'm seeing so many of your former teammates doing media and all that stuff now. What's it like to see the world evolving from that perspective? And is it something that you want to be a part of as well? Uh, definitely, that's something I want to be a part of. But uh, it's kind of weird, um, you know. Growing oh, up, yeah, growing up, it was always keep your business off the internet, stay off social media, Especially in the be heat. quiet. Da, da, da. And now it's like put everything on social media, and I hate it. I'm see, like, I don't see, like. See, that. that's like, the difference. Like when I tell stories, I want you to make, I want them to be inspirational, and I want you to laugh. Some I ain't gonna ever say. And like, people are saying everything. Everything. Like you asked the question about do guys do it for a guy? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Oh, I don't know nothing. Smoking weed. Yeah, I don't. I don't know nothing about none of that. Drinking. Do you ever? Do you ever know a player that? Don't answer that. Okay. Played better high. Don't I don't answer know. that. You don't have to say the name. No. I don't know anybody that smoked before the game. Thank you. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you know anybody that drink before the game? No. Yeah. See, mm-hmm. we we, duh, we we don't know. He's lying. We don't know. We don't know. If I wasn't white, would you have answered the question? You're not white. You're Adam. No. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're the only one that doesn't call me Lefko that I'm okay with. You're Adam, brother. But we appreciate you making the time. It's been cool to see you all over the place. To your first question, getting more respect, I'm glad that's going to start changing. Because that's the thing that you realize. The more media you do afterwards, the more they talk about you, and mm-hmm. then that respect comes. It's a very weird thing. Very weird. Because, of, sorry to cut you out, but the respect thing has gone out the window. Yeah. It's like now people are more concerned with views. and like, no, 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 numbers. Mm. Numbers. I, numbers I want, and content. I, I, want, I, want, I want numbers. Like, you know, like MVP. Yeah. What's his numbers like? Right. He got nice numbers. I know his team ain't win, but what, what is his numbers like? And I don't want to hear that bull in the China shop. Yeah. You still got to play against Mario. I still got to play against D-Way like it, it's once or twice a year. So if the man is averaging 27, the man is averaging 27. Mm, right. I don't want to hear, oh, he's averaging 27, but his team is the ninth. And this dude, I always go back to Steve Nash beating me twice, averaging 12 points. Damn. He never going to let that go. Never. <laughs> I'm never, I'm, you know I'm what? I'm hosting Eddie White. Lot. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm mad about that. I'm hosting a lot of March Madness this year. And I am excited to see the shot over and over. Oh, I, see, I love March. Shot. March is one of my favorite months. I lost oh. so much money on that damn shot. He never bet against me, man. You were big you know on that? Memphis. Yeah. Why? Because D. Rose? Yeah. D. Rose. D. Rose was a beast. Uh, but, hey. That shot, though. But, you know, once you go and grab Mr. Clutch, it's, it's a different ball game. Hey. Mr. Clutch, I love that. Um... But no, and uh, I think we're going to end with this. This episode is coming out right around your birthday, and we have some very, very special that have wished you happy birthday, Shaquille O'Neal. 42 years old. Incredible. Wow. If I was 42, I'd be making Rudy (laughs) Gobert money. 
12 <laughs> points and, and eight rebounds, I could do that right now. And it's not a diss. It's a fact. Making 250. God damn. Averaging 12 points. All right, get out of here. Love you. I want really quick on this convo. People love to talk about legacies. Like, if James Harden wins a title, all of a sudden all those numbers are crazy. But the name that I don't think is being talked about is, what if Luca does it? Like, if Luca won a title, he's under 25, with the numbers he's doing, what happens then? I think the conversations then would get crazy if Luca won a title. The monkey would definitely be off his back. But then you start, when you start comparing him to others, hopefully they will say, like they do all the other greats, all right, you got one, now go get two. Mm, oh, yeah. You got two, now go get three. Oh, you got three, Steph got four, is that so? That's what, but, you know, for guys like that, all you need is one. You know, Dirk, one. But, you know, you talk about legacies. I was taught by my dad is that if you have to question it, you know, you're really that good. Mm. Like when you have conversation, like, for example, Michael Jordan. One of the goats. Larry Bird. The goat. Larry Bird. Unbelievable. Coach. Magic Johnson. Yeah. All right, now, now let me get your name. Uh, Alonzo Mourning. I don't know. That, that's my point. Yeah. And I hate that you picked it, that name because no, that's I my did that boy. Yeah, sorry. That's my boy. But he's like Hall of Famer, you know, been, like he's in on that cusp. No, but the way I played, and if you got to have a conversation, that means I'm, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Mm. I want to be Shaq. Ooh, like that. Like I got to be definitive. Like when you talk about rappers, Jay-Z, it ain't nothing to say. Who's been your Snoop. favorite white teammate? Oh, uh, Mike Pinberthy. What? When was that? In L.A. Lakers. So, what was the the dancing guy on the Lakers? Oh, Mark Madsen. Mark Madsen. Yeah. You had a Capono. Capono was nice. I had this conversation with Chuck one time. When you have a good white guy and he's better than the other team's white guy, are you like, we got Bobby Sura, we got a good one all day? Really? I I, I like. I, I love shooters around me. Shoot that. Just shoot it. I, I, I love shooters around me. So our girls, Taylor Rooks and Joy Taylor, they started a podcast, Too yes. Personal. Shout out to them. Go check it out. They had a conversation where they were saying that sometimes it is hard to be pretty because you're not taken serious in serious conversations. It could be a detriment. And I was curious your take on that. It's, I would say they have to take a negative that they deem to be negative and turn it into a positive. I think because of those physical attributes, it opens the eyes of people to get them noticed. Now, once the people notice you, show them how professional you are. Seize that opportunity. Seize the opportunity. It's, it's but similar, you know this, man. It, like It's similar to saying, sorry to cut you off. No, please. Use what you got to get what you want without selling your soul. What I think is interesting is you got Shane to say, mm, on that one. That was good. <laughs> um, you are someone that even if, let's say, somebody intrigues you, you can also go professional and you respect people immediately. But you also know a lot of men don't have that ability. Once they get that locked on, like, they can't handle themselves. Like, some dudes just don't have that. And they really do turn into kind of like a creepy dude. I wouldn't know nothing about that. I know. That's why I'm proud of you. I, I appreciate you. Cause yeah, I, it's probably because you have daughters. No, it's because uh, growing up in a drill sergeant family, professionalism is always yeah. the first thing. Pull your pants up. Tuck your shirt. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And then, you know, I always talk about as a person, sometimes you have to go to a higher power. Of course, God is the higher power, but my higher power is my mother watching TV. Mm. I want my mother to see me out there looking like a damn and acting like a damn fool. Yeah. That's the first thing I think about before I say or do anything. A lot of, every now and then I'm, I'm human. It'll, you know, it'll, something will set me off and I'll react, but I always get the call from her. And with the, she, she has a calm voice, but she's cursing me out at the same time. Baby, don't do that mean, means, what the f are you doing? What's wrong with you? Yeah, that, that, that's what that means. Like, 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 baby, don't, don't do that. Leave me alone. Like, Cause I'd be going off on some people sometimes, and she had to come. She's like, "Baby, leave Dwight Howard alone." 
<laughs> I'm like, yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Leave I feel like own, she baby. says that a lot. <laughs> Not a lot, but, you know, every now and then. Every now and then. She does. That's what's so crazy, though, man, being around you. It's like you could say something, and then the next day it's like the New York Post. Shaq calls out former Orlando. And it's like I can talk. And nobody talks about it. But I don't even be calling them out. I don't have to call people out. I just, I just be, hey. I I'll tell you who calls people out. 50 Cent calls people out. That's my boy. It is impressive how yeah. he is on everybody's neck constantly for years. And, and see, so you have to understand, like, I, I, I follow certain people that, that intrigue me a little bit. I'm the 50 Cent of the NBA. Ooh. My mentality is if you me i'm gonna come out with a mixtape on you that, that's how and I, another but, one and another but, but, one and but, another one but with me you gotta understand it's, it's never serious because if it's serious it ain't gonna be on the internet well it's funny 50 cent has actually said the same thing i saw an interview with um who was yeah, a dude from, that. from houston yeah i saw that nigerian guy um, i think his quote was i don't want no problems but if you want a problem i'll be ready the, well, the one i'm talking about who was the guy started with a ch the rapper he had like one hit, one or two hits. Shit. Bro, hold on. It was a story in that 50 started beef and the guy thought it was real beef and 50 pulled on the side. I was like, do you not understand what I'm giving you right now? Oh, uh, chameleon. Yeah, yeah, chameleon, yes. <laughs> not sure, my yeah, bad. Yeah, 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 yeah my yeah. bad. I knew it was CHA, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Like, but like, that's exactly how you work. Exactly. Is if you play this game, and you battle with Shaq, do you know what that could do for you? you but you, people take it serious. You know when I figured that out? I had an event at my house, me and my cousin, and, and we were both big wrestling fans. And it was like, hey, Hulk Hogan's coming to the house. Cool. Oh my gosh. And then one of his enemies is like, his enemy comes out, I was like, bro, I don't want him tearing my house up. They came in together, they ate, they were shaking hands, and they was talk, and me and Kenny was hurt that wrestling was fake. This Kenny right here? Yes, devastated. So Kenny, that's when you learned, because Hulk Hogan like, and like Macho Man came yeah, over. Yeah, because Kenny was like 18, 19, I'm like 20, 21. We was like, hey, man, I had the biggest house in Orlando. It was like WWE, Planet Hollywood, so everybody's coming to the house. Like Hulk Hogan, and like all the guys that were supposed to be fighting in the match, they were there, chilling, drinking, smoking cigars, and me and Kenny on the back were like, you you had us fake that, like, because the first they said Hulk Hogan was, of course he can come. And they said the other guy, called, man, they're about to tear my damn house up, cuz. <laughs> they came in shaking hands with their wives and everybody's knowing each other. You hit all the tables, yes, brought out plastic. I was plastic like, oh, ones. so like, from, from 2 to 18, when I thought wrestling was real, I realized that it was a business. So I was like, you know what? Especially now with all the hey, stuff. brother. You know, yeah. How you promote? So, like a lot of times, I don't be serious. I just be just be having fun. How come you think people feel the need to when something comes out, they feel the need to grab their phone and respond? Everybody ego doing. is hurt. I'm talking from level one, two, three, four, all the way up to our. They don't have the level of self confidence that you do, and they think that it's the most important thing in the world. That's my reads on it. Why do you think they respond? I don't know. I'm, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. I was tapping into my earthling mentality there. To I told my guys, if I ever grab my phone and go on a rant, smack the shit out of me. Do I have that access to? Everybody. Like, just just walk up to them and be like, yo, man, what do you know? You better not. I, I will never. Backhand, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I get a chance and you cleared it? <laughs> yeah. Remember that thing that went viral when I said you're not supposed to be emotional with a woman? Yes. Well, check out this guy's take. No, you don't tell your wife or your girlfriend your troubles. Talk to a trusted brother, talk to a counselor, a business coach. Do not share your down times with your woman. I sent that to two people. I sent that to you and I sent it to my wife. And I was like, it's funny that when like a white dude with a beard and glasses says it, right. you're like, wow, that's really interesting. Right. And then when Shaq says it, people are like, that dude doesn't even have a wife and he's <laughs> yeah. got emotional issues. Yeah. But that guy, people are like, maybe I should tell my brother my emotional stuff yeah. instead of my wife. When he said, Did you like, feel validated when you saw that? I, I don't need validation. I, come on. I don't need validation. No, I didn't mean that word. But when you heard that, you were like, exactly. No, I was, it, it's, his take is very definitive but my take wasn't like that my take was more on a when you're the man and you have wife and you kids you you handle everything mm. be a man mm. 
Like, first you have to identify, is, is your problem really a problem? Because if it's not a problem, don't put that on your wife. Mm. Your wife already got to take care of the kids and cook and worry about her job and worry about her career. And that thing that comes there, like, they already got too much pressure, so you don't want your pressure on them. Be a man. Yeah. As a man, you take everybody's pressure, your wife, your kids, your family, your mother, your brother. So that's the standpoint I was on. But his, his, his take was very, very interesting. Let me tell you a story. I went to the Bahamas one time, and I was faking it until I was making it. People don't know that I didn't own a yacht, but Shaq on a yacht, you're probably Yeah, I would it. assume you owned it. Yeah, exactly. So that, 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 that's the thing I'm going for. So, And I got to get the biggest yacht. Like right. I got to get the biggest yacht. I got to get the space up front. So I, I get it, and I'm chilling, and I'm you know just sitting there. I don't know what pulled up next to me. This is the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was pretty. So now I'm, I'm pissed. I'm like, you didn't tell me this guy's coming? It's an 80 year old guy with a young wife and all her friends. And I got mad and I got jealous. But you, you don't understand. A guy like me, jealousy motivates me. It was like, that's going to be me in 10, 15 summers. I'm going to be an old white man. I'm going to be an old <laughs> rich guy on a big yacht in the Bahamas. So my 300 day plans is just, you know, get me one of them big old nice little yachts that say, what's up, my nizzle on the side. Yeah. I, did you tie the boats up and party together? No. but Did you ask him what he did? No. So I you did. just looked at this old guy from afar and is like, I'm going to be yeah. that for one day. And I was mad as hell, too. Mad as hell. And he had lights and neon. I was on the Crazy show. that's the first time you met Bezos. Yeah. yeah but, but you know what's crazy? Because now, cause now, you know, all the stuff I wasn't thinking about, I was like, I just waste 300000 on this boat. Yeah, just rent it. Trying to. Dude, you could wear face. fake clothes, fake jewelry, and everyone would be like, why would Shaq wear fake? I do wear fake earrings. I would, too. No, I do. Tell I'm trying to why. convince my wife to buy fake stuff. No, you shouldn't buy fake stuff, but let me tell you why. My first week in Orlando, me, D. Scott, we go to the International Diamond Exchange, and I buy just like $60,000 Allen Iverson, boom, take a picture, stuff from my ear. I lost him. From the store to the car. Fell out. I don't know. No, I, I had them in the bag. I couldn't find them. So I always said to myself, I'm, I will never buy real diamond earrings again. So if you see a diamond, it's cubic. All right. So we have, uh, this episode's coming out March 13th. So we have some March 13th trivia for you. Got it. March 13th, you played against Boston in 2001. So Lakers, Boston. You shot 14 free throws. How many did you make? Seven, nine, ten, or all 14? All 14 would be in college. I still have the record, I think. I think it's 12 or 12 versus Indiana. I'm going to go with Boston. Who was in Boston? Oh, yeah. Ten. Nailed it. Ten. No. What, what does the who in Boston, what does that even matter? I had a uh, place where I used to go get my club sandwiches at. Turkey Club? Turkey Club with extra mayo on that thing. That's disgusting. It, it sure was. <laughs> so you were motivated by somebody in Boston to make free throws? Yeah, somebody who made my sandwich. And I did I, not know Diddy was partying in Boston in 2001. And, and, and Kenny, when I came back to the room, the sandwiches was waiting on me with them hot fries and them pineapple soda. Boy. And I, when I had that sandwich... <laughs> All right, check, check your phone, because I think you have trivia questions, too. Okay. But while you do that, on this day in 1999, A.C. Green played his 1,000th consecutive NBA game. Wh who did he play for at the time? Phoenix, Dallas, Lakers, Miami. What year? 1999. He played with me, Lakers. Incorrect. He played for Dallas. Bonus question. What Damn. team did he hit the 1,000 mark against? Clippers, Nuggets, Sonics, Grizzlies. Grizzlies. Nailed it. Two but, out of three. Uh-oh. Not bad. Not right. bad. Not bad. Now let's see if you can beat my record. All right. I got to beat two out of three. Today in 2018, Russell Westbrook recorded his 100th triple-double with 32 points, 12 assists, 12 rebounds. Which team did he do this against? Magic, Grizzlies, Hawks, or Knicks? Magic. Hawks. Hawks. Question number two. 
I feel to, like you're really good at multiple choice. I am. Today in 1999, this player became the third player in the NBA history to amass 20,000 points, 10,000 rebounds, 4,000 assists. Which two players were there before Chuck? Will Chamberlain, Oscar Robinson, Kareem, or Jerry West? So Chuck did it. Yes. Okay. So Chuck did 20,000, yeah. 10,000, 4,000. So and which two, two players, players were before? And it was yes. Will, Wilt, Kareem. Oscar Robinson, Kareem, and Jerry West. Okay. I'm going to put Oscar as one of them. Okay. Because the assist there, Wilt, Kareem, Oscar. Who was the other one? Jerry West. I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, Kareem and Oscar. Final answer. You need a lifeline? Yeah, apparently. I'm not, I'm not going to give you an ank. I'm going to give you an ank. It was Wilt and Kareem. Wilt and Kareem. Yes. So you missed 1.5 out of 2, which gives you an F. I stink. <laughs> I am awful. In my house, that would have been flipping. Those free throws they said I missed, I didn't miss none of them. So now I'm number two in scoring.